Hello, anatomy students. In this podcast, I'll be reviewing the internal anatomy of the heart. The heart is divided into right and left halves and contains four chambers. The two upper atria, the right atrium and the left atrium, and two lower ventricles the right ventricle, and the left ventricle. The right atrium is a thin wall chamber that receives deoxygenated blood from three veins. The superior vena cava, the inferior vena cava, and the coronary sinus. We can see the opening to the coronary sinus here at the floor of the right atrium. The right atrium pumps blood at a lower pressure, just one floor down into the right ventricle. This is the reason why it has a thin wall. It doesn't need any extra cardiac muscle because it's only pumping blood a short distance. This is the interatrial septum. Interatrial means between the atria and septum is a term that means a barrier or a dividing wall. The interatrial septum divides the right atrium from the left atrium. The fossa ovalis is a small oval-shaped depression located on the interatrial septum near the floor of the right atrium. It's the filled-in remains of a previous opening in the fetal heart called the foramen ovale. Our first valve is the tricuspid valve. It's called the tricuspid valve because it's made up of three cusps or flaps. The tricuspid is also known as the right atrioventricular valve or right AV valve because it's found between the right atrium and the right ventricle. There's a good mnemonic to help you remember the names and location of this valve. Remember to keep the RAT on your right. The R in RAT stands for right. The A represents the atrioventricular valve, and the T is the tricuspid valve. The tricuspid valve allows blood to flow one way from the right atrium into the right ventricle. The right ventricle is a thicker wall chamber that pumps deoxygenated blood out of the heart and into the lungs. We can see on the inside of the right ventricle the trabeculi carnii. Trabeculi carnii is Latin for fleshy beams, and these are ridges of cardiac muscle fibers that make up the whole inside lining of the right ventricle. They serve to help convey cardiac muscle action potentials through the heart's conduction system. These stringy parts of the tricuspid valve are called the chordi tendinii. These tendon cords are long bundles of connective tissue that connect the cusps of the tricuspid valve to the papillary muscles. The chordi tendinii help keep the AV valves closed when the ventricles contract so blood doesn't flow backwards into the atria. The papillary muscles shown here in red on the model, are cone-shaped bundles of cardiac muscle fibers that are extensions of the trabeculi carnii. When the ventricles contract, the papillary muscles pull on the chordi tendinii, which closes the cusps of the valve. The interventricular septum is the thicker dividing wall between the right ventricle and the left ventricle. Our next valve is the pulmonary valve, also known as the pulmonary semilunar valve. 
it's a thin membrane-like valve that doesn't have the chordae tendinii like the AV valves do. And it's located here at the base of the pulmonary trunk. The pulmonary valve allows blood to pass out of the right ventricle into the pulmonary trunk and then onto the lungs through the right and left pulmonary arteries. When the pulmonary valve closes, it also prevents the backflow of blood into the right ventricle. The left atrium takes in oxygenated blood from the lungs through the four pulmonary veins. We can see the left pulmonary veins here, and the openings to the right pulmonary veins here on the inside of the left atrium. The left atrium pumps blood one floor down into the left ventricle. The AV valve between the left atrium and the left ventricle is the bicuspid valve. It's called the bicuspid because it has two cusps or flaps. It's also known as the left atrioventricular valve or the left AV valve. It's also known as the mitral valve. This is because it has a similar two-sided shape as a mitre, which is the hat a bishop wears. The bicuspid valve allows this oxygenated blood to flow from the left atrium into the left ventricle. Another good mnemonic to help you remember the names and location of this valve is keep the lamb on your left, where the L stands for left, the A, atrioventricular valve, the M, the mitral valve, and the B, bicuspid valve. The left ventricle has the thickest walls of all four of the heart's chambers. They measure around 10 to 15 millimeters in thickness, which is about half an inch. Its walls are so thick because it's responsible for pumping high-pressure blood long distances throughout the body through the systemic circuit. And like the right ventricle, the floor of the left ventricle is made up of ridges of cardiac muscle fibers called the trabeculae carnii. It also has the chordae tendinii that connect the cusps of the bicuspid valve to the papillary muscles. The last of the heart's valves is the aortic valve, and we can find it located here on the roof of the left ventricle. It's also known as the aortic semilunar valve, and it's found at the base of the ascending aorta. The aortic valve allows oxygenated blood to pass out of the left ventricle and into the ascending aorta when the left ventricle contracts. And from the ascending aorta, blood can now flow through the systemic circuit to all other parts of the body.